Hey everyone, thanks for listening to the Seriously Social podcast, where we bring, bring you behind the scenes of some of the world's largest companies and explore their social media strategy. My name is Keith and I'm the CEO of Socially In, a social media agency that works with medium-sized and large businesses. We help brands with social strategy, original content production, ad management, and more. Today, we have a very special guest, Greg McCarthy. Greg is the public relations and social media manager for CyberArk. And for those of you who don't know, CyberArk is a publicly traded information security company offering privileged account security. The company's technology is utilized primarily in the financial services, energy, retail, healthcare, and government markets. Greg, thank you so much for being our guest today. I'm sure you have a lot of insight to share with our listeners. Yeah, well, thanks so much for having me, Keith. Big fan of the show. I've uh, heard some of the previous episodes you guys have and great conversation stories and always cool to hear about others living the life of a social media manager. Thank you. Um, so I want to jump our conversation off by asking about your background and how long you've worked in the marketing space. How did you get into the world of marketing? Did you go to school for it? How long you've been with CyberArk? Just to kind of get to know you a little bit better. Yeah, sure. So it's been almost, we're coming up on a year at CyberArk, which is crazy uh, to nice. think about the year. It's definitely flown, flown by, but uh, you got to wind the clocks all the way back to 2013. I started my career in social media as a social media marketing intern at a company called EMC Corporation, which is one of the, the biggest technology companies here in Massachusetts. It has since been uh, purchased by Dell and is now part of Dell Technologies. But I joined there in 2013 after you know coming from UMass Dartmouth. I, that's where I studied and got my marketing degree. And it's funny, I was thinking before this podcast of, you know, my journey and sort of the, the beginning of the, the, the journey of when I first started EMC. And I remember coming in as this college kid, you know, I took a social media marketing class when I was at UMass Dartmouth. It was one of the, the first ever social media marketing classes. I remember that like a university actually offered. So I thought I understood social and, you know, I knew content strategy, I knew SEO. And I, I thought right. I was going to, you know, I was going to understand a good understanding of social coming in. And I remember my first day, going into EMC and immediately being like, wow, social is so much more than just, you know, publication. And I quickly right. learned how, you know, the team was, was listening. They were doing, you know, QBRs to measure sort of insights and all these executives were just like so passionate about it. And, you know, they wanted to see these insights. So right away I was like, man, I'm in the right place. I definitely, definitely picked the right profession. And I'll never forget too, my first day I, I come in as this intern and uh, you know, I was sharing a cubicle with someone and, I'm going to forget she had this huge monitor and was you know, looking at all these dashboards. I go, what, what are you looking at over there? And she goes, I'm actually listening for leads. So they were using social media. This is back in like 2013 to listen for conversations, awesome. to, you know, sprout over leads to sales. And immediately I was like, wow, social is just so much more than publication. And I've really spent my, my full journey, um, you know, finalizing around that. So I was at EMC in, in Dell for about six, uh, six and a half years. So I spent a lot of time, um, building out a go-to-market strategy around events. So one of the, the big sort of my, my claim to fame, I guess you can call it, at, at EMC and Dell was, you know, at the time, social was just evolving so, you know, heavily. And, you know, when I came in in 2013, experiential marketing was like one of the biggest things that the marketing team was focusing on. They were putting all these, you know, big dollars behind big sponsorships at events. And uh, I actually built out a, you know, event social strategy around when we had these big gotcha. events, we would build these, you know, pretty complex strategies around, you know, how do we go to the events and, you know, post live updates, keep the story going. And, you know, I was able to go to like over 45 events throughout my time uh, at Dell awesome. and, and EMC. And yeah, it's crazy now to think, because I look back and I, I see Dell now, they, they have a whole team around enablement and activation. It's just, it's grown substantially. Um, you know, I was able to do a lot of really fun things. They're a great team. And, you know, covered a lot of the B2B shows and a lot of the B2C shows. I got to go to CES a couple times, South by Southwest, designed some awesome. you know, really complex social strategies for, you know, these marquee events where the company would invest lots and lots of money to have these, you know, major experiential experiences where, you know, social was just the perfect complement for that. And it just started to catch fire. Uh, I started to get in demand. They started to hire people. It was like a really cool sort of, you know, couple of years that I spent there. I then transitioned into comms. Uh, mm -hmm. where I then, you know, sort of 
got out of social, still did a little bit of social here and there, but started to get into more of the communication side of things and the, the storytelling side of things and help Dell build out their Progress Made Real initiative, which was all around the year 2030. So I was part of the, uh, the comms team that helped build the, you know, the story behind that and was able to do a lot of communications for the, um, the CRO at the time and, you know, really was part of the social impact launch of their Progress Made Real initiative. And then as of last year, I migrated over to CyberArk, who when it first came in was not a very social company, but now uh, we've started to sort of build a foundation and you know, get the wheels turning and nice. be a much more socially driven company. Nice. And that's awesome that your university was offering social media um, courses because I remember I went to Mississippi State and I mean, it was not too long ago, um, but we did not have any social media courses. So shout out to uh, your college for doing that. Yeah, U UMass Dartmouth, big shout out to them. It's funny, you know, you asked where did my social media journey start? Uh, I remember when I did the interview for EMC, uh, it's funny, I still keep in touch with a lot of my old colleagues from that first social team and uh, that everyone's gone on to do all these, these cool things. And some people are, are still, still at Dell and, and, and you know, running the, the social strategy there. But, you know, it's funny that the real reason, the real place it started was I interviewed and I'll never forget when I interviewed for the role, I really plugged the uh, social media class. So that was, that was a big, uh, a big competitive advantage, I'd say, when, uh, when it all started. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, a lot of our listeners are actually trying to break into the social media space. So, I mean, the tidbit to take away from that is if you are able to take some sort of course or some sort of training, it can go a long way when you're out and looking for a job, essentially, in the social media space. Exactly. The advantages are key. Any competitive advantages that you can call out. That's, that's that was right. always my strategy. You know, you got everyone who's going to school is applying to try to find that dream job that they like. How can you corner those advantages uh, and really call them out? I remember that was, you know, one, yeah. one of the key things that I tried to play to. And um, I'll never forget interviewing for the job. That was one of the first things they said to me was, wow, you guys actually offer a social media class. And I was like, yeah, I, I do. And, uh, you know, the advantages are always key when, when trying to uh, get into the right places. Well, I want to learn a little bit more about that. So when you started to interview at EMC, you obviously had this, course background you took a class did you have like a certificate that came along with it what what were they looking at did they look at your grade that you got in the class did you have like a portfolio at the end of the class that you were able to show them yeah so we ended up getting um i remember in the class we got a hubspot inbound marketing certification so i was able to uh, call out okay. that and I, I think the other thing too was I, I it's always, you know, you, you never say no to an interview too. Um, it's funny when I did the interview for the role, I was actually on spring break. I took the, I, I still joke with my old managers about it. You know, I was in my roommate's car who drove down to Panama city beach, Florida and took the interview. So all that research I did, I didn't reschedule or nothing. But when I interviewed, I, I think that, you know, I was able to ask the right questions. I remember at the yeah. time, uh, I asked the questions about, I asked the question about hashtags and what was your hashtag strategy? And I remember that kind of, sprued a good conversation. And I also think too, it's, uh, I always tell people, you know, right place at right time is also a key thing. Yeah. Uh, I think they were looking for someone to come in who they could possibly then rotate on to full time. So at the end of my internship, I mean, I saw the writing on the wall where events, um, you know, that was a hot commodity. And I knew there was so many events that were coming up down the pipeline. I kind of, you know, went to the, the director of the team, Tom Lytle is his name. He's still there. He's still the director of social business at, uh, at Dell Technologies. And I remember going up to Tom being like, uh, I'm happy to raise my hand to work on these events. You know, I'm doing all these things now. I'm going to still do that. But I know my internship's coming to an end. I know you guys have these on your roadmap. I'm happy to raise my hand to actually work on this yeah. and, and help build out a social strategy around it. And mm -hmm. that led to him saying, yes, it was a, a huge show. And um, at the time, we, we had a couple of new leaders who were coming in who were really driven by social, and um, the show was actually Oracle Open World. It was 2013, and we had a killer social strategy. We were able nice. to capture share a voice at the show. Um, oh, yeah. Hashtag EMC was like the number three most used hashtag at the show. So it was all these great metrics that came out of it. After the show, they were like, wow, we can probably build you know a comprehensive program around just these events. And like I said, that led to me being a part of like 45 different events over the last, you know, that's five awesome. and a half years, over five and a half years. And that's now like an actual function on their social business team now. So it's like yeah, yeah. evolved into something much bigger where they have people focusing on more of the Dell EMC shows or the Dell shows. And it's just, it's evolved into its own beast. And uh, right, it's cool to right. say I was, was part of the, the origins, I guess. 
Yeah, no, I love that. And I mean, that just goes to show if you do have an internship, being proactive and being vocal around something that may not be your direct responsibility can still take you a far way. That's the key. I am the biggest advocate for internships in the game. I mean, it's Same. helped me throughout my career from, you know, I've interned at two internships. The first one um, was at a place called Grossman Marketing Group, and it was a very small family owned business. And, you know, it's just a summer internship, but I learned more there about just the basics of, you know, email etiquette, to, right. you know, how to interact with leaders and how to, you know, present and how the day-to-day -day life in, a, in an organization works. And then, you know, by the time I got to EMC, I was able to parlay all the things that I learned there um, into that. And if I learned anything too, you know, for anyone who's listening to this, who's, you know, interning or, you know, trying to get into career and social, I, I always say like the most important thing you can always do is just step outside of your comfort zone. And a lot of internships now, you know, companies are really trying to build these, you know, unbelievable internship programs where they're, you know, yeah. taking their talent and then, you know, retaining them. And when I was an intern, the, the biggest thing that I tried to do was like any chance I got to step outside my comfort zone, I jumped at it. So there was this big, at, at EMC at the time, the, there was this big intern competition that they had. And I actually entered an idea. It was a social media competition too, but it was open to all the interns and they wanted to find ways to increase uh, internal engagement on social media. So at the time, Vine, if you remember Vine, this is social media yeah, yeah. throwback. It's RIP Vine. We can maybe talk TikTok later, but uh, at the time, Vine was like this big thing. So I came up with this idea yeah. for a Vine challenge where, you know, employees from all around the globe would show what it's like, you know, coming into work. And my idea actually got selected. So I got to present in front of nice. like 700 interns, a panel of executive du judges, and I won the competition. So like, from right from there, That's I was awesome. like, you know, I, I think my, my, my name kind of got, I, I started to get some street cred, I guess you could say. I would walk yeah, the hall, yeah. oh, you won yeah. the intern competition. But it all comes back to like stepping outside of your comfort zone. And yeah. if an opportunity comes up or, you know, you see something on your team's roadmap or, you know, you know, they're going to need resources to help bring that you know plan to life. Sometimes raising your hand and you still got to worry about the work that you're doing, but you know, raising your hand to get involved in other things is always been, yeah. um, no, that, that's, that's, that's always, really always paid off. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm with you 100% there. So I want to um, switch gears a little bit here and talk about what your day to day at CyberArk looks like. Now, everyone in marketing that I've ever spoken to give me the same answer. Like, it's never the same. Uh, but I just want to hear from you. What is it that you're doing on a day to day uh, when you get in, I guess, not into the office anymore, but when you start your day off? Yeah, I, I like to start it with, uh, I just got a puppy. So usually it's a, a walk the puppy to start and think of the, the three things. I've been doing this new thing where I, I try to like spend 20 minutes in the morning and I'll try to map out like, all right, what are the three things that I really want to get done today? I'll write those down and I'll have those in a little browser that just, I'll look at that and I'll say, all right, these are the three things I want to get done today. Cause it, it varies. Every day is, is really different. So I'd say, you know, at a high level, CyberArk, you know, I've been here almost a year now. So when I first started, I, I, you know, did a lot of, almost did like a listening tour, right? And tried to understand sort of where the, the areas were that we, you know, need to break into and, and how yeah. they wanted to integrate social and, and PR and comms into, you know, the things that you know, I would be sort of involved with. But you know, I feel like I spend a lot of my time really just trying to get uh, team members or, you know, leaders or our corporate accounts to, you know, really try to rally around our brand identity and, and drive engagement. So, you know, CyberArk's a, a clear thought leader, you know, we're a clear number one in the industry. And, you know, we're now sort of going towards this world where we're now, you know, really embracing this you know, digital culture and this new digital format. And you know, I spend a lot of time trying to empower employees to, you know, really be our best brand advocate. So employee advocacy is big for us. And, you know, I, I think that each, again, each day is always different. You know, you have your, your big moments that you, you know, try to sort of, you know, build around and, you know, sort of work towards. And, you know, for social, our team will usually, you know, bring us together at the, the beginning of the week. And, you know, we'll talk about what the, you know, content calendar looks like. What do we have gotcha. coming? Obviously, everyone has their, has their roadmap. So you're always working towards those big things. But I'd mm -hmm. say, you know, over the course of the year, we've, we've really tried to spend a lot of time empowering, you know, our employees. You know, the, the thing with yeah. CyberArk, a lot of people, you know, if, if you know cybersecurity, you know CyberArk. And, you know, if you know CyberArk, you know the people who work there. So there's these, mm -hmm. you know, unique personalities who you know, people just know. So how can you use social as a way to almost empower them and, and showcase who they are and also showcase, you know, what are the big moments that are happening here at the company? But, you know, what are the big things that are happening in the industry? So how are we getting 
whether it's thought leadership, you know, content that's not necessarily related to us, how are we getting that into the hands of, you know, our employees and our workforce or our leaders uh, and empowering them to almost be our, our key brand advocates. We've done, I'd say, you know, from the CMO down, our CMO, Marian Budnick down, there's been a pretty big initiative to, you know, activate the brand to get more social. So it really kind of, I would say, r- rallies around those three. Each day is, you know, again, always, always different. There's always new, uh, you know, moving parts when you're in a growing company, things are always popping up and you know, yeah. there's new priorities and, uh, and, you know, things go on and, you know, always keeps it fun and interesting, which is yeah, makes it yeah. fun to work in social. This might be a dumb question, but does cyber arc and cybersecurity fall under the umbrella of IT? Absolutely. So it's funny. So at, at a high level, you know, CyberArk protects privileged accounts, which, you know, you take any IT team, you know, they have access to those privileged accounts. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, you need to protect those. And what we do, you know, we're seeing, you know, privileges now everywhere. It's in the cloud. It's, you know, on-premise, it's off-prem. And, you know, with what CyberArk really brings to the table is, you know, protecting that privileged access. So, you know, you take the the recent Twitter hacking, that's example number one of not doing privileged access management the right way where, you know, they were able to get into there. And once you get into those privileged accounts, you know, it's all over. You, know, you yeah. own everything, you own the cloud, you own it all. And once that gets taken away, it's, you know, it's all over. Scary so stuff, what CyberArk yeah. does essentially is, you know, keeps, keeps that safe and, uh, and protects your privilege access management. Got it, got it, okay. And what would you say kind of the high level goals for y'all strategy? Um, what is that? Is it lead generation? Is it to position the company as a thought leader? What are kind of some of the high level goals that you look at? Yeah. So thought leadership's key. Um, I think at the end of the day, you know, we want to drive engagement. I mean, that's been a huge part of, you know, what we've been focusing our time on and, you know, we want to obviously continue to position CyberArk as a thought leader within the industry. That's huge. And, you know, going back to what I just shared a second ago, like empowering employees, like I think that's really, really key. You know, your employees can really be huge brand ambassadors if you um, if if you want them to be. Yeah. So if you don't mind, I want to touch a little bit on the employee advocacy, because I know, you know, we have a lot of listeners who do have big companies and they're always looking for ways to uh, leverage or empower their employees to get more eyeballs on the content. So how hard was it? Because I know you guys have a pretty big company. It's a publicly traded company. How hard was it to implement a solution? How long did it take? Uh, Can you kind of talk through what that entire process looked like? And how many employees did you end up getting on the advocacy program? So I'm very happy to to share this because we've been working very hard towards it. So we we were not a social company at all, really, before I, I came in here and you know, like I said, the first thing I did was a big audit. You know, what do we got? What's out there? And we had, I'd say, probably less than 5% of the company active on social media. And right now, since we launched advocacy, uh, we had about 35% active in our platform, posting daily. And we really want to try to get that to, you know, even further down the line as we move towards the end of the year. Uh, But it took a little while. I mean, I'd say probably it took around six months. I mean, between the scoping of tools to, um, you know, identifying sort of what was the best fit. Obviously, when you're a cybersecurity company, you you have to, you know, partner with the right people internally, go through procurement, all all the the fun ins and outs there. That obviously takes time. But then, you know, once you get your solution, building the program. And when I tell you, you know, we've spent a lot of time just building a foundation. You know, we had, you know, refreshing social media policies to, you know, yeah, getting yeah. sort of the infrastructure in and to allow us to now get to where we are now to sort of be uh, a socially driven company. But it took a good amount of time. We ended up going with um, with Sprinkler. So Sprinkler has been our sort of all-in-one uh, social tool. We do publication through them. We do listening. Yeah. We do advocacy. Uh, and we do reporting. I mean, every every sort of bit that social works on sort of goes through them and you know it was it was a good journey to uh, ultimately get everything off the ground but hey honestly you know you could probably do a full podcast just on the ins and outs of advocacy yeah, right. which is always fun yeah absolutely well thank you for sharing that um and last question i just want to end with a fun fun little question i know you and i connected on linkedin and that's how we even got this podcast set up but what are your top three platforms? Where do you spend your time personally uh, when it comes to social? Is there one that stands out that, you know, might not um, come to mind immediately? Or are you 
Yeah, I get, so it's funny. I usually wake up and the first thing I do is check my Twitter feed. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm a Twitter junkie, I think at heart. Um, you know, I, I get a lot of my news there and, you know, I think LinkedIn is, is a close follow. Uh, I do try to get a lot of my, you know, especially being in the B2B space. I think you see that, you know, the majority, I would imagine if you talk to anyone else who does social and B2B, they're probably telling you, yeah, the conversation is primarily on LinkedIn and Twitter. So I do try to stay very active in those two platforms uh, when, when I wake up Got in the it. morning. But I will say, uh, I'll give you, instead of the top three, I'll give you my top four because Instagram's right behind. And I have become probably like many in the millennial generation throughout this quarantine, uh, a junkie for TikTok as well. I probably, yeah. especially at night when I'm like laying in bed right before I go to bed, I'm usually on TikTok. But uh, in the morning, it's usually roll out of bed, look at my Twitter feed. Uh, the Celtics are in the playoffs right now. Obviously, I'm a huge football fan. I'm checking my fantasy football stats. You know, people did uh, seeing what the analysts are saying. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's probably that would be my number one. Gotcha. Yeah, my number one is definitely LinkedIn. I've started to spend a lot more time. I've been publishing content. I've been trying to grow my network there. But um, awesome. Well, thank you, Greg, so much for sharing all that information. I know it has brought a lot of.